If you grew up before 1975, I think you're going to love this video. After 1975, eh, mildly amusing, <laughs> I hope. This is the bow and arrow that I bought when I was 10 years old. I saved my money, walked a mile, went to the sporting goods store myself, and they let me buy this. Now, I can't believe the dangerous things that my parents let me play with during my childhood. I remember jumping ramps in the alley that were huge and we would lay on the ground in between them and watch the bikes fly over. We used to jump over the garage roofs from one to the next because the houses were so close together. I also remember model rockets. We would launch these rockets in the air and sometimes we would actually put an M80 in the top of it and watch it explode 300 feet in the air. I called my dad the other day and I said, Dad, what's wrong with you? Why did you let us play with such dangerous toys? You know what he told me? He said when he was a kid, he and his cousins would have BB gun fights. And then he told me he used to melt lead pour it into molds to make his own toy soldiers. And then he would bite off the excess. I said, Dad, I guess that answers my first question. Today on Alley Picked, I wanna go over some of the dangerous toys that I played with as a kid. Some of them I still have. Maybe you played with some of these, or even worse. First up, Mercury. Nowadays, thermometers might look something like this. You simply point it at your forehead, push a button, and it reads your temperature. But when I was a kid, they looked more like this, only a slightly smaller version that your mom might have to put under your tongue or stick in your, well, let's just say a place that's not so comfortable. Anyway, sometimes I would find these, but instead of this red liquid inside, it would have silver mercury. Highly toxic, you shouldn't touch it, or smell any of the fumes. I would crack them open, pour out the contents on my kitchen table, play with the little silver mercury balls, and then bump them together, and then they would form like this huge mercury ball. It was a lot of fun as a kid. We didn't know any better. In fact, a friend of mine loaned me a sample. Let me show you what it looks like. Just kidding. <laughs> this is the sample. Number two, jarts. Well, here's a great game for the family to play. Let's take half a pound of flying pointy metal and toss it in the direction of our loved ones, especially the children. It's sort of like horseshoes, but different rules and a higher probability of blood. For dangerous toy number three, I'm gonna to have to show you what it looked like in pictures because I don't have the original. I wonder if it got destroyed when it started the house on fire. <laughs> Creepy Crawlers. This complete set allowed you to make your own rubbery insects and other cool bugs. Pick the color goop you wanted and squeeze it into the metal mold of your choice. This is called the Thing Maker. You plug it in and it gets extremely hot, which in turn will heat the metal tray, cook the goop until it stiffens into a rubbery substance. Let it cool, and then the creepy crawlers are ready to scare grandma. Later versions did have more safety features built in. You do know it really didn't start the house on fire, right? I used to love building things out of erector sets. I never could quite make anything that looked like the instructions. Everything I made turned out rickety. Anyway, it may not look very dangerous at first, but this thing has hundreds of small little parts. It's got metal with sharp edges and it comes with this motor. Lots of gears that can trap tiny little fingers. During the 1950s and 60s, chemistry sets contained many different chemicals in powder and liquid form. You can still buy chemistry sets today. They're for kids of all ages, but when I was a kid, they were really for only one group, 
mad scientist. Like me? Exactly, like him. While I only played with the chemistry sets a little bit, I do remember my older brother. He would make things explode and melt. Most of the chemicals and equipment in these kits were pretty harmless. Sodium cyanide can dissolve gold in water, but it's also a deadly poison. Atomic chemistry sets of the 1950s included radioactive uranium ore. Some items are noticeably missing, like safety goggles, rubber gloves, and a mask. The last dangerous toy that I want to tell you about is one that I have vivid memories of. In fact, I could almost feel the pain still radiating down my wrist. The name of the toy is called Clackers. The problem with this is that these hard plastic balls, when they're struck together, can shatter, sending pieces of plastic into your face and eyes. While this never happened to me, they did often swing wildly in all directions and come smashing down on my hands, wrist, and forearm. Here they are in action in a commercial from around the early 1970s. Unbreakable miracle clackers are for everyone, even the little guys. Do it with both hands for stereo clackers. Nowadays, you might see their transformation in something that looks like this, which you might find in the dollar store. What fun is there in that? Thanks for watching Alley Picked, where I love making cool stuff from junk. And other times, I like to show you some of the junk I've collected over the years, which today just happens to be a little dangerous. Until next time, I'll meet you in the alley.